I'd be really surprised if anybody who watched my videos didn't know what Pepe the Frog is. But if you are one of those people, let me give you a very quick explanation. Pepe the Frog is a meme. That's about it. It's used by tons of people. It's been used by celebrities. It's used across the board. Sometimes Pepe is racist. Sometimes it's totally innocuous. As of the past couple years, we've heard that Pepe has been co-opted by the alt-right. And that's how the media describes it. They say that Pepe has become a symbol for white supremacy and for racists. The creator of Pepe has even sent cease and desist letters and filed lawsuits against people for using Pepe. And this has become particularly interesting because some people believe that Pepe at this point is public domain, while Fury seems to believe that it is absolutely his property, his right, and he can file these suits. Certainly, he did create it. The most recent news is that Matt Fury, creator of Pepe, is suing Infowars for copyright infringement. But what's particularly interesting now is that people have started sharing an interview from 2015 where Matt Fury actually encourages people to profit off of Pepe specifically. Not only did Fury say that he wanted people to profit off of Pepe, he actually said he wanted to promote 4chan. Before I get into all of that, let me give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, you guys. If you haven't already, go to patreon.com forward slash TimCast and become a patron today. There are many different tiers to choose from, most notably tier one. At $10 per month, you get access to behind the scene photos and videos and bonus commentary videos. When you sign up on Patreon, you help me do the work that I do. So please consider giving at any level today. First, let's look at the lawsuit. Pepe the Frog Artist is suing Infowars for copyright infringement, and this is according to The Hollywood Reporter. The legal campaign to take Pepe the Frog back from the alt-right is now in California federal court as artist Matt Fury has filed a copyright lawsuit against Infowars. Fury says he created Pepe as a peaceful frog dude at the beginning of the century with the catchphrase, feels good man. His anthropomorphic creation then became a meme on the internet and was tweeted by Katy Perry, Nicki Minaj, and BuzzFeed, among others. The lawsuit pinpoints one poster in particular as a source of copyright infringement. The poster features Pepe alongside Infowars founder Alex Jones, Donald Trump, Milo Yiannopoulos, Ann Coulter, Matt Drudge, Roger Stone, and others with the text MAGA, short for Trump's campaign slogan, Make America Great Again. Fury, represented by his attorney Rebecca Girolamo at Wilmer Cutler, says he didn't authorize such use of Pepe. He alleges the poster is being sold by Infowars in its online stores. Infowars, Alex Jones in particular, is arguing that the poster is transformative, and there is a fair use argument in copyright infringement cases that will be up for the courts to decide. But this is part of an ongoing battle where Matt Fury is trying to reclaim Pepe as he describes it. But this isn't where it started. Motherboard has the story from several months ago. Pepe the Frog's creator goes legally nuclear against the alt-right. Lawyers served notices to Reddit, Richard Spencer, Baked Alaska, and Mike Cernovich. The artist's lawyers have taken legal action against the alt-right. They have served cease and desist orders to several alt-right personalities and websites, including Richard Spencer, Mike Cernovich, r slash the Donald subreddit. In addition, they have issued Digital Millennium Copyright Act takedown requests to Reddit and Amazon, notifying them that the use of Pepe by the alt-right on their platform is copyright infringement. The message is to the alt-right is clear. Stop using Pepe the Frog or prepare for legal consequences. And now we're seeing another instance of a legal consequence, Fury suing Infowars. But you'll notice Fury and his lawyer have issued a statement saying they didn't authorize such use of Pepe. So does Infowars have a right to sell Pepe? Has there ever been an instance where Fury has given permission for people to use Pepe? And the answer is yes, absolutely. The Daily Dot ran a story on April 12th, 2015 4chan's Pepe the Frog is bigger than ever, and his creator feels good man. This article contains an interview with Matt Fury in 2015. The title of the article recognizes 4chan's Pepe. They really, they really view Pepe as being part of 4chan culture. Let's look at what Matt Fury said. The Daily Dot asked, what about people profiting off of Pepe? I believe in supporting people's decisions to profit off of Pepe in order to provide them with the most positive business experience possible. I strive to be an advocate for Pepe in both love and enterprise and hope to help business people to have an empowering and joyful experience while making an ocean of profits as limitless as the universe. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I have no idea how this will pan out in court, but it certainly seems that the public message Fury gave out several years ago 
almost three years ago, was that he doesn't care, in fact, encourages people to profit off of his image. But it's actually a bit more interesting than that. In the Hollywood Reporter article, it says, but beginning in 2015, various fringe groups connected with the alt-right attempted to co-opt Pepe by mixing images of Pepe with images of hate, including white supremacist language and symbols, Nazi symbols, and other offensive imagery, states the complaint lodged in court Monday. Fury has worked hard to counteract the negative image of Pepe, including collaborating with the Anti-Defamation League on the Save Pepe campaign to restore Pepe as a character representing peace, togetherness, and fun. They state that beginning in 2015, people began to co-opt Pepe. But I think it's fairly obvious that Pepe has been used in racist ways by white supremacists or the alt-right for a long time. It takes only a few seconds to search Google Archive to see posts from 4chan's politically incorrect board depicting anti-Semitic posts and images of Pepe. So a lot of people might say, yes, he's correct. Around this time, they began co-opting Pepe. But racist Pepe imagery has existed long before he claims it did. And not only that, 4chan has been perceivably anti-Semitic and racist long before he claims Pepe was co-opted or started to become a racist meme. The reason this is important, in the Daily Dot interview, they ask, but 4chan went crazy for Pepe, yes. And he said, I believe that the most important thing I can do as an artist is to protect the voices of anonymous people on the internet and help ensure that those voices are honored. It is my job to help 4chan have the experience that they want without judgment or criticism. In the end, I want 4chan to feel they were supported by being heard, respected, and part of the decision-making process. Instead of promoting my own agenda, it is my goal to promote 4chan. Different things work for different people. Let me support you in the way you choose to draw Pepe. Let me reiterate the point where he said, instead of promoting my own agenda, it is my goal to promote 4chan. If Matt Fury wants to promote 4chan, by all means, go ahead and do it. But the, to then later act like he's surprised at what was going on in 4chan seems to me at least a bit disingenuous. We can go back to 2014 and see what 4chan was up to. In one instance, 4chan's latest terrible prank convincing West Africans that Ebola doctors actually worship the disease. Have you welcomed her into your heart yet? Asks one post on 4chan's Politically Incorrect. I'm talking, of course, about Ebola-chan, the viral goddess of love and Afrocide. Our shrines and incantations give her strength. Now, I think it's important to say that 4chan is a very complicated place. You shouldn't take posts necessarily at face value because very often it's what they call fake and gay. That's what they say I know people probably get mad that I say it or something, but that's what they say when a post is not real. In fact, there's a disclaimer saying that everything on the site is a work of fiction. But we do know that 4chan as a community has pulled off some absolutely insane works of, in, uh, of investigative ability or computational power. Like when they found Shia LaBeouf's flag by looking at stars, airplanes, and hearing frogs. By finding Antifa members simply by their eyes and their shoes. They've been able to pull off some pretty crazy things. At the same time, they've also pulled off some huge hoaxes that have screwed with the media to an extreme degree. And this isn't a new phenomenon. 4chan has been around for a very long time. In 2014, Ben Garrison had a comic depicting a guy in a fedora with 4chan in his hat and a Nazi armband. The reason I bring this up is to just point out that it is common knowledge that prior to 2015, there were white supremacist sentiments circulating on 4chan. It's true. You'll see a lot of posts where they say pretty offensive things about Jewish people and otherwise. So I'd be surprised if Matt Fury didn't know that when he said it was his goal to promote 4chan. Back to the Daily Dot, we can see an update from September 13, 2016, nearly a year and a half later. In a surprising turn of events, Pepe has been co-opted by the alt-right. Pepe appeared in Donald Trump propaganda, and a heckler was booted out of a Hillary Clinton rally for yelling about Pepe. In fact, a post on Clinton's official site proclaimed Pepe a symbol associated with white supremacy. However, creator Matt Fury believes that Pepe's alt-right affiliation will soon pass. He told the Daily Dot, it's just a phase. It's not the first time Pepe has been reclaimed for evil, and no one will care about it come November. I predict that his sly, lovable, and charming status will be intact as early as next week. That was a statement made in 2016, and I think it's fair to say that he was wrong. Not that Pepe has remained racist, maybe he has, but certainly the conversation around Pepe is still that Pepe is a symbol of racism, hate, and white supremacy. 
even though to many people it absolutely isn't. It's more like a joke or a meme. In fact, many people who are simple conservatives might use Pepe and they are not white supremacists. It's very complicated. The important things to take away. Did Matt Fury ever give permission to anyone to profit off of Pepe? Well, if they looked at this interview and the Daily Dot was actually interviewing Matt Fury, I mean, for all I know, the Daily Dot made it up. I don't think they did, but if these are Matt Fury's words, then I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people said, okay, I will. And Matt Fury has actually sued some people for profiting off of Pepe. And now he is suing Infowars. So this will become particularly interesting when this goes to court, if it goes to court and this is brought up. Because certainly, I, in my opinion, I think you could issue a cease and desist letter and say, Matt Fury has every right to change his mind and tell people stop using Pepe. But the most important thing to me is Matt Fury's statements from 2015, where he said he wanted to promote 4chan. I think it is fair to say that at that time, everybody knew what 4chan was like and what was on 4chan. Even going back to September 13, 2016, Matt Fury downplayed it. It's just a phase. And he said it wasn't the first time Pepe has been reclaimed for evil. And he thought nobody would care as early as next week. But again, in the lawsuit, they bring up beginning in 2015, fringe groups started using it. If that wasn't the first time Pepe was reclaimed for evil, why didn't Matt Fury stop whoever was using it for evil before? What made him do it today? Why is it important now that Matt Fury attempt to reclaim Pepe? If you were to ask me, there's no way Matt Fury can stop the use of Pepe in any way. It's become a cultural symbol, and many people are posting images of Pepe on Twitter nonstop saying that he belongs to the people. So I think there's going to be an interesting debate if this goes to court with Infowars as to whether Pepe has become something more. Whether there's a specific instance where Matt Fury does hold a copyright, the original Pepe image, or if people can simply create an alternative version that shares a similar idea and it's a derivative, transformative, or encapsulates something entirely different from the original Pepe. If Matt Fury is claiming that the current iteration of Pepe is a deviation from what he originally intended to be, is he not saying that the current version of Pepe has transformed? I'm not a lawyer, I have no idea, but I do find it interesting that Matt Fury said he wanted to promote 4chan as early as 2015, when many of us knew exactly what 4chan was about. What made him change his mind? I have no idea. Let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll keep the conversation going. How do you feel about Pepe? What do you think about Matt Fury? And what do you think about these lawsuits? I'd really like to hear your opinion. So stay tuned, new videos every day at 4 p.m. Thank you all so much for watching. You can find me on Twitter at TimCast and I will see you all again tomorrow.